Thanks for joining us once again. This is Fight On, part of Game On. Man, I hate reversing the damn screen, you know? Anyway, ESPN 4. What is it? ESPN Vegas 4, ESPN 12. Nobody knows the name of this event. We're confused as shit, but we know about fighting, and that's what we're good at. Stay tuned. Thanks for sticking around and not thinking that I'm stupid. Those are things that I enjoy doing. Uh, but there is confusion. What's up, Raul? How you doing today, man? Hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody. We are just as confused because it's ESPN 12, uh, Vegas 4, and then you got USC 251. Pretty soon, you're going to need a math degree to get all these right. Um, so we got ESPN 4 tomorrow night. Main event, Dan Hooker versus the amazing beast of a man, Diamond Poirier, Dustin Poirier. Justin Poirier. Dustin. D Dustin. The diamond just call him the diamond <laughs> i'm messing around guys yo i am so excited for this fight i i really really look forward to this event um and i think there's six fights on this card so uh you know it's one of those things where usually you get five and then if there's a title fight you might even get four it depends on how the card stacks but man this one stacks really well right uh we've got six fights and and um uh, some of them are interesting matchups. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure as to how some of them are going to play out. So that's why I bring Raul onto the show. He is my sidekick, and he is the stylist predictor. Um, so without that being said, is there any fight you want to start with or anything that maybe uh, jumps out of the page besides the main event? That's not fair. We'll save that. For sure, for sure. I mean, we really want to touch up on this fight coming up. It's uh, number 13 ranked Brendan Allen going up yeah. against Cal Dacus. I believe is how you pronounce it. Uh, interesting thing about these two guys is they're finishers. I mean, I think combined, they have a total of 26 fights and 23 of those were finished. What? And yes. And then we got uh, Kyle himself is coming in on like a, I don't even know. I think it's like a nine fight win streak. It's going to be, I think his, it's actually his first official UFC fight. He did fight in the contender series and won that. I mean, I don't know if people consider that like an official UFC debut, but anyways, this will well, be Dana like, show. Because if it was Dana, show, you're talking about Sean Woodson. No, Kyle Dacus. Oh, because because I think Sean Woodson also, uh, not Sean Woodson. Uh, yeah, Woodson also came out of that. I think I'm not sure, but well, Allen did as well. A lot, a lot of fights and a lot of fighters in this one. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we because of these Vegas events are happening mostly because of the corona and, and visa issues a lot of these fighters are just these american uh, people living in america they're just you know up and comers so they're they're, t they're picking up every fight thrown at them and that's why we're seeing a lot of these contenders all these tough fighters you know it's really uh, funny when i first got into boxing which is what got me into fighting um i would see the build up to the fight it would be are you coming into the ring with 34 bouts, 33 by knockout you're like oh my god this guy just knocks people out and then you go to the other guy uh, 42 fights 40 by knockout you're like whoa like we're about to see a knockout by statistics i mean these guys combined only have three fights that didn't go to knockout or whatever the math i just did and and then the fight ends up being like bah, 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 bah. you're like mm, the decision really boring it's like damn it i certainly right. hope that this doesn't build up to be that trend um well, i think this card in general is going to be a card of like i'm predicting crazy finishes out of most of these fights because just looking at these two guys alone and not, not even talking about the core main event just yet, but these guys alone, like, yeah, they're finishers, but if you look at most of their history, they're a lot, they're very uh, submission based fighters in terms of finishing, mm -hmm. but because they're coming in to make a name for themselves, I really feel they're going to try to maybe stay away from that. And, and they're going to be looking out for knockouts, I think. So it's going to be a fun fight to keep it. an eye out. Oh, about it. Yeah, man. So you're predicting a, an all out because we had a recent card uh, that got a lot of critique for being boring. I mean, and then of course you have Dana White. There's no boring fights. You know, if you're a fight fan, you watch them all. all right. Like, really, bro? Do you like movies? Do you like movies? Do you like movies? Well, then you watch them all, right? They're all good. Fuck you, Dana White, piece of shit salesman. But anyway, yeah. So he has I, to sell. He has to sell. He has to sell, and he has to. And then when 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 the product that he comes out with is shit, what do you do as a good businessman? You say, hey, man, look, you know, there's a lot of product out there. We'll get it right. Just shut the fuck up. <laughs> But anyway, long story short, uh, this fight card is going to hopefully be different from the one that recently happened where people were like, boo, it was like all decisions. You're saying this one might be different? I think so. I really do. I mean, I, I think just number one, coming off of these last couple of events that have been maybe a little slower in terms of action. Um, and, and again, a lot of these guys are guys from the Contender Series, from the Ultimate Fighter, and, and they're, they're taking advantage of the spotlight because they know that they're the only ones being seen right now in terms of sports. 
they know that people are viewing and, and watching in that don't usually watch MMA. So if there's a time to show off and stand out and start building a brand or a name for yourself, this is the time. And you got two you know, submission artists that they're aware of, each being submission artists, they're going to probably be like, nah, let's keep it on, up on the feet for a while and see what happens. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm going to hold you to this. So uh, when we do the recap episode, uh, can't wait. Uh, let's see how much of this actually happens. Cause you know, predictions are always right. So, um, uh, so, so you're calling you, you're calling this fight a finish and who do you got winning this fight? If you had to pick one, I think I'm going to go with Brendan Allen. I feel like he has a little bit more experience in the UFC than, uh, even though it's only, you know, he has a contender series and he, he, he participated in two events after that. So he's a little bit more experienced with how the UFC works and the caliber of fighters that we have in that, in this league, uh, separate from Kyle, who, yeah, he did the contender and, and he, he won his, the two events after that in Cage Fury, again, both by submissions, considered they're called Bravo chokes. Uh, I looked that up. Apparently some sort of Darf choke, but in reverse. It's an it's interesting arm triangle type of uh, submission. But I think Brendan's going to go in there more with a little bit more experience. And his last fight was a TKO by elbows and punches. So he knows how that feels. He probably enjoyed that type of finish, and he's probably going to want to seek it out and do it again. Okay, so you got Brandon Allen and TKO. Uh, do, you, do you predict this to be a fight that goes a little back and forth before the TKO, or do you think Brandon Allen's just going to out, outclass him? What do you think? I, I definitely think it'll go back and forth. Uh, Allen doesn't seem like, a, like a, one of those dumb fighters that are just going to go in there and, and go crazy. He wants to win. He wants the W. He's going to play a little bit smart at first. And again, he's dealing with a guy who's also very strong in the ground, like I said. So he, he, he's going to want to protect himself from those takedowns early on. So I don't see it going, uh, getting too excited too soon, but look, look forward to starting around uh, to around two to round three. Okay, so so later round not TKO. All right, not the first uh, round. So that's the fight that you enjoyed. Um, one thing that I was watching today it was uh, Sean Woodson. I was watching mainly his fights outside of the UFC. Uh, have you seen this guy? How tall he is? <laughs> he's like a one forty five er, and he's six three. Yeah, it's the same thing with the. Uh... Fuck with, with Lewis from the in the prelims, Lewis Pena. Right, he's Lewis. like a super massive lightweight in terms of height. Jeez, man, that's a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of, of height, man. You're talking six three, six three. I mean, heavyweights are six three, six four. This guy's a this guy's fighting literally a hundred pounds, almost a hundred pounds under the the heaviest of heavyweights. So like the some of the heavier guys in the UFC are like two forty uh, around there. This guy is fucking what one forty five two, you know, and he's six three. That's ridiculous, man. And I think that that range, and he doesn't, uh, he's not shy about his range either. He will engage in fights, even though he's got that, like, because for example, like, no offense, John Jones is a champion, but he has been very choppy lately. He's always got the reach advantage, but right. in, in, the, in the really tight exchanges, John Jones is never looking too clean, uh, in my opinion. Like, he well, got caught by a lot of guys. Well, there are cons to being this lanky in such a low weight class. And um, I mean, great. He, he is 6'2, which is great for his reach. But when you talk about when a 145 division, that's all bone weight, which means muscle-wise, maybe the power won't be there. So he's going to have to rely a lot on other forms of winning and not so much knockout power. And that's kind of what you would give up when you're looking at tall guys going into these lower divisions. But the guy he's going up against, I mean, he's, he's really 6'1 as well. So it's not too much of an advantage. He's, he's going up against a pretty fair opponent in terms of reach as well. He's only, I think, three inches in, um, longer than his opponent. The only thing is that he is going undefeated, so the pressure is on him, on Sean Winslow. Uh, no, one, no one likes to receive that first loss, so there's always a little bit more pressure on the undefeated guy. Hmm. So we'll see what happens with that fight. I mean, I had no idea the guy was 6-1. I, I didn't look at his uh, stats in that way, but the fact that it's 6-1 just kind of shits on everything I said. He doesn't have a major uh, height <laughs> advantage. But, I mean, it is crazy to, to, to think about these things. And, and from what I've heard, because of the physics of it, right, if, you're, if you've got really lanky arms, what ends up happening is – uh, your tight boxing suffers a little bit because it takes more distance. You have to bend a little more to come in, in these. Whereas if you're a really short, stocky guy, it, like Tyson, right? Picture Tyson, always a shorter, stockier yeah. guy, but inside, like inside the, the weave pocket, Tyson, bah, 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 he had a quicker snap to the body. All these things because of the actual, uh, you know, your actual build, your, the, way you, the way your body is proportioned. I think it's really important. So I always see these lanky fighters as people that if you get inside with tight boxing, they're, they're not going to be able to hit you in close range as hard for that right. same reason. So, so yeah, man, I agree with you there. I do want to see the, that, that's, that opening fight to me should be fun, right? I do think the Sean Woodson fight 
with with Juliana Rosa. That one should be interesting as well. I, I uh, it, you know, an, another thing I wanted to talk to you about was the fact that in MMA, um, especially to newcomers, you know, every time I'm going to show someone two fighters, they always go by. Uh, they look at the. Has this ever happened to you? You show somebody new, and they look at the stats and they see the records, and they put a heavy emphasis on record. Right. They're like, oh, but this guy's undefeated. Why do you think he's going to lose? And it's like, because because MMA is a MMA is all about styles. Like there, there's no, you know, usually in boxing, if you got a guy with a massively much better record, yeah. the odds are there in that. But in MMA, dude, there's so many things that can happen in a fight because it's so three dimensional that man, you don't even know. Like a guy could literally throw a heel, a flying heel hook, and that's it. And it's like, what the fuck? Like the Anderson Silva loss, and and back in the Japan the Japan days. Right, he was beating the shit out of this guy, and the guy just threw a flying scissor or whatever the fuck it was, and caught him in a in a, in a leg lock. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it's definitely all about styles, and and then when you when you have really good style matchups, it makes for a great fight. And, and this one in particular is going to be interesting. You you got a guy in Sean Woodson who mostly he likes to stand up, doesn't really go to the ground too often. A lot of his fights go mostly to decision. And then you got Julian, which has an amazing takedown accuracy. Likes to attempt a lot of takedowns, likes to get to the ground. But then Sean Woodson, in terms of the stats, has an 85% takedown defense. So, I mean, Julian, unless, it's, unless Julian's been working on his striking, you might be in trouble there. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, like I said, man, these fights are kind of uh, low-key exciting, man. They're not the biggest names. People won't recognize them. They're not going to jump out of the page for the casuals. But, man, th th there's a lot of matchups tomorrow night. And, guys, it's 8 o'clock on ESPN. Come on, it's cable. Even if you don't have ESPN+, Plus, you can watch these, right? So... Get on that shit, man. Get into this shit. Um, these are wild times. And, and where are they fighting exactly? It's the, the same apex. So, so yeah, it's going to be apex. that weird, eerie, uh, eerie zone. Moving on up to the Vilante fight and Maurice Green. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of the fans are saying that this is like the least looked forward to fight of the card. Do you agree disagree? So Vilante seems to me like someone who likes to go in there and brawl. He's like that old school street fighter type of, like, I mean, the UFC calls them freestyle fighters when they're announcing them. And whenever I hear the, the term freestyle fighter, I'm just saying, okay, these guys are just brawlers. I'm not taking anything away from them that they're not technical or anything like that. That's not what I'm trying to get at. But they like quick finishes. They don't like fights going on too far, too deep into the rounds. I mean, he has a 59% KO uh, win percentage. So, Kind of proves my point there while his opponent Maurice is uh, really high in submissions. So again, stylistic fight matchup here where it can go either way and it's going to come down to who really executes their style first. Yeah, I agree with that. I think this is going to be one of those fights. And where is it happening? At a heavyweight, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, and what's crazy is that uh, I think Green is the he the heavier guy. I think he's overall, you know. Yep, 258. We got Vilante at 230. <laughs> That's a, you know, that's almost 20 pounds. It's not, I mean, it's, it's percentage wise. It's not as much as any other weight class, but still, man, it's, it's up there. But, but Maurice has the reach at 82. Vellante at 76. I mean, it's just going to be one of those really cool fights where these heavyweights can keep their, their endurance high. I expect a, a surprise knockout out of nowhere. Okay. So you're calling someone knocking out, but this is a coin flip. I would say this is more of a coin flip fight. Oh yeah, for sure. No, for sure. Coin flip. Coin flip. So, okay. So let's go coin flip knockout. Um, I'm gonna go with Green just because he's heavier, man. You know, it's just, it's just, just uh, I'm being fattest. Is that is that a is that a thing where you're partial? Yeah, no, I think that's a I think that's a good choice. I mean, Gian Falante has more fights. He's 17, 11. You're talking about 28 fights already. He's getting there in in the years and in the the damage on his body. Maurice Green at eight and five. He's just still kind of fresh in the scene, not too old, but with, but that was definitely with some decent experience. So yeah, I, I give it to Maurice for the win. And Vellante fought Shogun, so he's got experience too. I mean, you gotta you gotta put Thron in the mix as well. I mean, stepping in there where the guy like Shogun uh, does does mature you in a way that, and like I said, exciting fight, coin flip. I'll go with that. I'm happy with not even picking someone here because of how much of a right. coin flip we're looking at. So, and then on to the co-main, which is the crazy mother, you know, Mike Perry, oh, dude. That I guy's was crazy. so excited to talk about this fight. That, can we can we acknowledge that Mike Perry is crazy? And he where is, where is he fighting out of? Hold up, hold up, Mike Perry. Number one, I'm like a huge Mike Perry fan, and not even as a fighter, not even as a fighter. Like this dude, he he's like he's like the friend that you're so happy to have him over because he just makes everybody happy. Whether it's because of his stupidity or just because he's just like a happy-go-lucky guy, he just seems like a really cool dude. I mean, I don't know him personally, but he just he just talks so much shit sometimes. It's like you can't help but laugh at it, like laugh with him. It's not even laughing at him, just laughing with him, and then 
just bumping him like, all right, dude, whatever. You're just being Mike Perry. That's just who you are. And, and, and the funniest thing about this fight, I don't know if you're aware, is so he's only going to have one person in his corner. Do you know who that is? I do, but I want to hear it from you. <laughs> his girlfriend. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just excited what to person? see how... I'm just excited to see how that comfort. I mean, if the if the camera does not zoom in on that conversation in between rounds, I don't know what they're doing over there. Can you imagine? It's Perry's in the fir- in the corner after the first round, all tired, like, and the girlfriend comes over. Who is she? <laughs> Who is she? <laughs> I mean, the dude's obsessed with her, which g- good for him. I mean, you want to love the person you're with. He's post all he does is post about her on his Instagram. So I mean, good for you, dude. That's all good and, and everything. But his interview with Ariel Hawani was just like, I don't need a coach. I've done the training. I'm good. I just need her in there. I'm like, all right, bro. All right. Bro, I mean, okay, respect. We'll to, okay, respect. Uh, order, like, complete respect for, for being unique and being yourself and like, hey, I don't need a coach. But, man, let's be real. This girlfriend that he got, like, what are her credentials? I'm not According to him. Her. Yeah, go ahead. According to him, she has boxing experience and she wrestled all through high school. Cool, dude. I play peewee baseball. You don't see me like coaching shortstops in college. Like, I mean, I mean, yeah. Also, I mean, there's a lot of people who wrestle in high school around here. None of them are qualified for a coach. Again, I, I think this is a weird thing. And of, again, I agree with you. If we don't get 100% focus, I don't give a fuck what the other corner is saying. If the other, I don't care. Like, don't show me the other corner. We see that shit every fight. I want to see how this crazy nut of a fighter <laughs> gets yeah. his girlfriend. And he fights out of Orlando, right? Well, so, yeah, that's the thing. So, I mean, in all seriousness, I, I think right now he's just lacking leadership. I, I don't even know if he has a solid camp. He was, he was in the Ariel Hawani interview, he was stating how he kind of just shows up to gyms and trains there. And then he, he's, al- he's almost like leading his own training camp. He decides what to do and when to do it. And, and I don't know. I, I think, I think in, a, in a person like him who's coming into his later term in his career, he needs to really start making a decision what he's going to do. Because, you know, if you're going to bow out, at least do it on a high note. And not falling not, apart in a way. Of course, you know his um his record has been all over the place for the most part. Some good performances, some bad. He's already lost two fights in a row. Last one was a head kick TKO. Yeah. So that's a that's a really bad way to end the fight in terms of damage. So I don't know. I think he's just lacking leadership. And then him bringing his girlfriend in is just a perfect example of that. Like, is there no one around to tell him, "Hey, dude, what are you doing? Like, this is a fight." Maybe not, man. Maybe he needs it. I mean, but that's the thing is like, what credentials does she have? I mean, if you tell me, look, look, she is an amazing, uh, you know, sports scientist or some kind of sports management, something qualified qualifications. I'm just looking for qualifications, which there are none. Poor, poor Perry, bro. He's fucking himself over. I think he really is. That's just he's my taking, He's taking the honeymoon phase a little too far. How long has he been with her? Can we get that report? I mean, how long has he been? Well, he was just married the other day to P- Platinum Princess. I, I remember like, it was maybe a month or two ago. I go on Instagram. I'm like, he posting his, he, he's posting something on his girlfriend. I'm like, hold up a second. Wasn't he married to like some blonde? And so I, I dig into it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I, thought, I could have sworn it was that blonde chick. Yeah, go yeah ahead. so I'm digging through his Instagram. And apparently, yeah, it's a new whole new person. I don't know when it happened. I, I can't tell you or what happened. But yeah, so this is not too old. It has to be within six months for sure. Because I'm telling you, like just last year, he was married to the blonde. Okay, so we got Mr. Honeymoon phase, uh, you know, first first week of a girlfriend where you're texting every minute and, and he's like, hey, do you want to come watch my fight? Oh, I'd love to. Uh, how about my corner, bitch? Anyway, so, I, do you, so let me ask you this. How do you see the fight going for Perry? Do you think he's uh, knowing what you know? Because he is crazy and he can pull off a win because of his craziness. But do you think that this is, do you think he has a chance? Like, can, can he go up in his career with these kind of crazy wackadoo out of the uh, box, I, unconventional shit? I see him going south really fast. I think Mike Perry is going to have a hard time with Mickey Gall. I mean, this guy is not a guy you underestimate. He, especially him being, having more established training, trying to come up in the ranks. He's going in there serious, focused, trained properly. And you're going up against a guy like Mike Perry, who he's talented, but without the leadership and without the proper guidance, he's probably going to go in there and just try to, you know, brawl this guy and, and it's just not going to work Mickey I think Mickey Gall is going to be, be a lot smarter a lot more technical find the weaknesses and, and end it quick all right so who do you got winning this fight Mickey Gall then yeah for sure I, I got Mickey I mean, Gall yeah. avoiding the striking I got him going to the takedown and, and winning it on the ground I think I think Mickey potentially Gall- yeah I, I think Mike the only way Mike Perry wins this is one of those like just lucky hillmakers that land 
the ones he thought. I mean, and he, yeah. he has, you know, the truth is he has the tenacity for it. I mean, I, I don't count him out. Nobody does. We're not ever going to say that. I just think that in, in terms of professionalism and, and technicality inside the octagon, it's going to be lacking if he's a little bit all over the place. But again, who are we to know? I mean, and like I said, if you guys are interested in seeing his crazy side, that is anywhere you can find it. But I mean, especially lately would be in the aerial show. Uh, the aerial show, man, that, that shit was funny. That episode was funny. Ariel's like, uh, Mr. Perry, what's going on? And he's sitting there like a fucking crazy guy at the ward. Like, man, no, and he's getting, he's getting to fight with bouncers and posting pictures of him damaged and all cut up. Like, what are you doing over there, dude? Yeah, he's fighting with. He, 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 I mean, this is a guy. I think that the, guy, uh, the fighting games for him for maybe the wrong reason. <laughs> but I mean, his uh, last his last fights, he has la- the last five fights. He's lost three, and the two that he won were split decisions, which means they were close. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's a little bit. Uh, yeah. But for a while, we have his fireworks. His head's not in it. I think. I don't think it's in it. His mind is somewhere else. That's a good fun fact to know that his two decisions, last decisions, were split. Uh, meaning uh, almost got away with murder though. But, uh, and last but not least, of course, uh, the one that we can't avoid talking about the final, the final, the uh, main event, the final fight of the night. Oh my goodness. I mean, Dan Hooker, the, he impressed me against uh, Felder. That was one of the best fights this year. Yep. If you ask me, did it happen this year? I don't think, think it happened this year. It was last year. Damn it. When was Felder? Felder one who- happened? No, it was this year, February 23rd. Right before, I think it was right before Corona hit like yep. big time. Yeah, that was one of my favorite fights this year. I got, well, at least my favorite main events. It's got to be. If you're looking at main event fights that went really well, uh, I would say, that of course, of course, there's no doubt about it. The, um, what is this girl? Uh, Wei Ling, right? Uh, so the Zhang Wei Ling fight? Yeah. Her against uh, Joanna, jo- uh, Joanna Joan Jacek. That's the best fight of the year. It's going to be hard yeah. to beat that. So far, uh, for sure. That's the best fight of the year. And, and, and we're not even talking between male and female. At this point, it's fun. Yeah, they, 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 they try to throw in the, the last main event of Berg, Burgess and Miller, but, but not Miller, the, that last weekend's main event. And no, it, it was a good fight, but no, the, these two oh, women's the fight. Emmett fight? The Emmett fight? Yeah, Emmett, sorry. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, Burgos Emmett fight, right? Was that it? Yeah. Yeah, that, that fight was great, but no, nah, man. Like, if you, you got to look at a, a title fight, five rounds at the pace they fought. Anyway, I feel like the Dan Hooker fight and the Felder fight had some of that in it. Uh, they didn't hurt each other as much, but the combinations they were throwing were amazing. Hooker showed his, his amazing uh, striking. I definitely gave the edge to Felder if I was a betting man that fight. And uh, Hooker came out with the upset. Well, I don't know if it was the technical upset. I'm saying from my eyes, I did yeah. not see Hooker hanging in there. And he's fighting against a guy whose boxing has been always decent, but ever so improving to the point where it's damn worth of everyone's respect at this point. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think Dustin has surprised all of us. Uh, I, I think a lot of people were starting to count him out in terms of his career. And he's really just come and rocked the world. He has wins over Holloway, over Alvarez, Justin Gaethje. I mean, his last fight his last fight was a loss against Khabib. But whatever, I'm okay with losing against Khabib. Yeah, no. Especially when it was a choke. So he's really surprised people. But, man, I got to give it to Hooker on this one. And, and honestly, only for one reason. Where he's training. And where is that? City kickboxing, bro. City two, kickboxing. two champs from the UFC are coming out of there. We got Izzy and we got the lightweight champ. Interesting. So we have in city kickboxing, is that an actual location or are they spread out throughout the country? Is that a very no, no, that's place? that's one gym in New Zealand. Okay. That's they've just been on a tear, dude. Everyone coming out of there is is a monster. Okay, so I gotta I gotta look into that a little more because I I did I did hear I've watched a lot of Adesanya and I I did mention hear them mention that that gym. Actually, I think there were some guys from his gym that actually asked him some questions from like a top from like a top row at one of the um at one of the Q and As, and I think they were from that gym. Now that I think about it, but I'm I'm really looking forward to that. But you're saying Dan Hooker comes out of this gym? Yeah, yeah, that's where he's training currently. I mean, you're talking about Alexander Volkanovsky, the one who beat Holloway last and took the belt, trains out of there. Like I mentioned, Izzy trains out of there, and he's training with these guys day in, day out. Interesting. So you're calling – would you say that that influences your pick on this fight? Would you say Hooker oh, has the edge because of, the, of with, that? Without a doubt. I'm telling you, these people – I don't know what they're doing over there. They're, they're just they're training beasts. They're training champions, and, and they, these fighters are coming out with such confidence, and, and their fights aren't even really close. I mean, look, look what um, Voskonoski did to Holloway, a oh. guy who was untouchable. Yeah, no, that was the most one of the most impressive performances I've seen in a long time was Volkanovski on Holloway, especially with how he just he had him beat at every turn. I mean, it wasn't an ass whooping, but it was definitely a dominant win. You know what I mean? Like you didn't get your ass kicked, but you weren't like it was clear that you were outclassed. And I think that was super, super impressive. Um, 
on his part. But here's the thing, though. Are you really going to just like over? Not, not, not that you're doing it, but I'm saying like we can't let go of the pedal on, on Diamond Poirier, man. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, I think he has momentum on him. And, and, you know, not to count out his team, he's training out of the American top team, you know, one of the best in the country. So he, he's, he's going to come in and put up a fight without a doubt. I, I don't think it'll be that easy for Hooker either. But I, I just, in terms of just predictions, and I had to pick one of these guys, I just feel like Hooker might just bring, in, bring the fire. All right, man. So you heard it loud here, loud and clear. So you've got Dan Hooker. Um, and if you had to pick a method, would you say decision or would you say, because it's a five rounder. So I guess <sighs> yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of striking there. I say there's a finish here, man. I say there's a finish between these two guys. Yeah, I, I, I'm calling it TKO knockout, but but I really I really wouldn't be surprised if it go, if it ends in a decision. If it goes to decision, it's because they hit the hell out of each other. I don't see Poirier backing down. I don't see Dan Hooker backing down, especially how he fought against Felder and and really proved his worth, and how he's never gonna back down and be shy. And of course, Poirier has a lot to prove right now because he looked amazing uh, against um, he fought Holloway. Yeah, he looked amazing. He looked out yeah. there. Granted, Holloway was coming up a weight class, and there was a despair, there was a big difference in power in that fight. But at the same time, it just show you that he's he's his movement is worthy of being in the octagon with guys like Holloway, and that makes this the main event of main events right now. I mean, no other sp- all other sports are calm, and we're still getting these fire ass events. And this is an important fight. You're talking about number five versus number three for sure. Potential champ, potential ch- potential contendership for the championship after this. Yeah. Yep. So uh, you guys heard it loud and clear. There are predictions for this episode, guys. Leave comments or questions or just straight up goofy shit in the comment section below. Uh, subscribe, ring the bell, tickle the ding dong, whatever you got to do. Uh, I'm here with, of course, as Raul as it gets, always bringing you the truth and the stylist of predictions. Thank you, man. I'll see you on the next episode, bro. Deuces. And of course, I got it right this time. Game on, everybody. We are fight on. Our logo's coming soon. And when it does, your shit's going to break. Flex. Bye.